the back worse bill. But uh, before we get to that, I just want to go back to last week's topic, gimmicks. Because since we had our last news conference, the CBO has finally added its voice to what I consider to be the only chart that really matters. Last week we talked about the fact that Penn Wharton and the CRFB had both scored the bill without the gimmicks, showing its true cost to be 4.6 to 4.8 trillion dollars. CBO has now joined in and said, no, that's actually 4.9 trillion dollars. So we finally have the scorekeeper for Congress weighing in on what the true cost of this bill is. That should be game over. But instead, we continue to see the effort underway to adjust language in the bird process and to make other changes. And we continue to hear the claim that the bill doesn't cost any money, that its cost is zero. The real cost, according to CBO now, is an additional $3 trillion. We've all been voting in a series of votes. The one that we're waiting to have come up next, that some of us may have to leave to go vote on, raises or is the cloture vote on raising the debt ceiling by two and a half trillion dollars. And if this bill is passed, we'll need another debt ceiling increase for three trillion dollars. And that's what should be discussed and should be the focus of debate today. The next chart here, we, sh we had this last week as well. Inflation is now at 6.8%. That's Friday's numbers, reaching a 40-year high. The average change in prices paid for consumer by consumers for goods has gone up by 6.8%. Gasoline prices up 60% over last year. Meat prices, another large contributor, bacon up 21%. The producer price index is up 9.6% today, the fastest pace on record. These are measures of average prices that producers receive for their output. We have raging inflation, we have raging debt, and we have raging spending, and if this bill passes, raging tax increases that are going to harm the economy and further drive the, the inflation problems we face today. That should be the focus of discussion. I'll wrap up by talking about the IRS. Now, let's put the chart up. You recall we had the IRS battle a few weeks back, and there was this proposal to have the IRS get into the bank accounts of everybody who had over $600 in income or $600 in spending. We've had the debates back and forth over whether they could change that number or whatever. The Democrats claimed that they took that out, but what did they put in? They put in $80 billion dollars for the IRS to conduct new audits and other activities. And what we have found from the Joint Tax Commission Committee is that the vast majority of those dollars will come from the middle class, the very group that the President and the Democrats say will not be targeted. The administration claims $400 billion dollars for this $80 billion spending, but the Congressional Budget Office says it's an $80 billion cost. The President continues to pledge not to, to uh, make those making less than $400,000 pay more than a penny. But the joint tax report shows that of this tax gap that the IRS dollars are going to, to collect, 78 to 90 percent of that tax gap falls on incomes below $200,000. And when you push all the way up to the $400,000 level that the President's talking about, only somewhere between 6 to 9%, 4 to 9% of it is for people above that category. The IRS cannot generate the money that the Democrats are claiming they need for this bill unless it focuses the target right on the middle class. And that's what the data shows. That's what they don't want to say. This supersized IRS will create an army of auditors to come out and go after the tax gap, which lies primarily in the income categories under $400,000. And by the way, one last thing. There's $105 million in this bill for the IRS 
to create a new army of regulators so that they can write all the regulations that they need in order to get into the bank accounts of people that we won't let them get into. This bill needs to be stopped, and the gimmicks need to be exposed. Next, let's go to Senator Grassley. I was a member of the 1998 IRS Restructuring Commission. That was set up primarily because small business was being harassed by the IRS. Everybody wants to take on the big corporations, but they got enough to defend themselves. But it's easy for the IRS to take on small business because it's easier to pay than it is to pay to defend yourself. So this group that Senator Capo says that the are going to be attacked, that the president said he wasn't going to attack those people under $400,000, a lot of those are small business. Uh, just lately, in 2021, we've seen the auditing of small business go up 50%. And uh, we, uh, we were successful in that $600 deal not being in uh, any of these proposals now, but that's only because people remember how it was in the 1990s and all the uproar from small business against the IRS. We had 11,000 just in my office emails come in against IRS having that increased authority and power. And we still have to be very fearful of the additional money going to the IRS uh, harassing small business more than going after the money of the, of the people over $400,000 a year. We see it in these statistics. We see it in the attitude of the IRS towards, or Democrats towards small business that somehow if you're a small business person, you're a tax cheat. We're going to go after you. Collect that money. Not only that, but they estimated at one time is going to bring in uh, seven or eight hundred billion dollars. CBO looks at it; it's only going to bring in two hundred billion. So I don't know what sort of an agenda they're on, but they're on an agenda that's going to hurt small business, the backbone of our economy, the places where people get started since this pandemic of the people that left their employment, one in six tenths million of the, uh, of the six million that still don't have jobs have gone into their own small business, potentially to be harassed by the IRS. We can't let, can't let that happen. We're not going to let it happen. And uh, in America, we have a choice between life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or you got the choice of letting uh, the bureaucrats uh, run your life. And the IRS is one of the most feared agencies, maybe the most feared agencies next to the EPA of anybody you do business with. The American people deserve to know that the Democrats proposing spending $80 billion in their tax, borrow, spend, and regulate, build back better plan. $80 billion towards the IRS. Now, the Democrats propose spending over half this money to field an army of IRS agents who are going to go out and initiate investigations, perform audits, and pry into the individual private lives of, of working Americans. Even worse, we have been told by the President of the United States, he campaigned on a platform of ensuring that taxes would not be increased. Middle America would not be targeted by our IRS. 49 out of 50 Democrats went on record just weeks ago indicating that they embrace this principle. But we know that most of this $80 billion will be used to, to enhance the ability of the IRS to target middle Americans. That promise will be broken. Yet another. Nearly six months since ProPublica leaked private, legally protected taxpayer information at a time when there is a, a peak level of distrust of the Internal Revenue Service, Democrats want to increase the power of the IRS to, to insinuate themselves into the private lives of ordinary Americans. Now look, this is the wrong idea 
at the wrong time. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We have supply chain problems. We're experiencing cost inflation that costs a range of, of consumer goods. We got so many challenges, and, and once again, the Biden administration and Democrats in the United States Senate are out of touch with the real challenges and, and um, experiences, experiences of everyday Americans. Here's Scott. First off, remember when Biden said this bill wouldn't cost anything? As uh, Senator Crapo said, this is that, that's not true. Look at all these numbers. It's going to cost us trillions of dollars, and we're going to have unbelievable deficits. Then you look at the uh, look at the inflation, whether it's the CPI or the PPI. I mean, this is ridiculous. What it's going to cost people to just just to live in this country? It's not the rich that get hurt. It's the poor that get hurt. And now this targeting uh, this additional money for the IRS to target all Americans is is absolutely wrong. I mean, this is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to target our um, our families. It's going to target our small businesses, and it's going to go after them to get them to pay to get them to pay more money. I'll give you. I mean, think about the IRS. The IRS can't keep information um, confidential. They don't do that. There's breaches. They've released information through ProPublica. Then on top of that, now what they're doing, if you haven't heard from people all around the country, when you ask for your refund, you have to give them a selfie so they can track you. I mean, this is this is our IRS now is acting like Big Brother. They want to have your picture. They want to have all your information. Know exactly who they're who they're talking to. Remember when you ha it was your money? You have a refund. They would send send it back to you in a check, not a more. You have to give them private information, even get your money back. It's wrong thing to do to pass this bill. It's the wrong thing to do to give the IRS eighty billion dollars more money to target Americans. Senator Capital. Oh, thank you. Well, I think uh, that my uh, colleagues have been very eloquent in, sa in stating why this is uh, not just a bad provision, but a bad bill. Uh, I would remind everybody that this morning we heard that the requested level of raising on the debt limit is $2.5 trillion, expected to take us past November of 2022. When you load that on, on top of this huge tax and spend bill, it's just, it's in the, as my father would say, it's in the nosebleed section uh, when, when you start getting up to those numbers. When you look at small businesses, we have 113,000 small businesses in, in West Virginia that would be impacted by this. Many of you know that I started the physical infrastructure negotiations with the president. We tried to get him to uh, help us do a fee at something on an electric vehicle since they pay no gasoline taxes. No, no, no. We can't do anything that would impact anybody making under four making uh, under four hundred thousand dollars a year. This hits right at the belly of those small businesses and individuals. And uh, I think that um, eighty. You know, we have a record. I've heard a lot about how the distrust of the uh, IRS. Uh, the IRS, and, and I guess this is no surprise, has a thirty-seven percent approval rating. Uh, among the American people and has that history of targeting not just organizations but individuals uh, by using their power and, uh, as Senator Scott said, uh, putting information out into the public sector in, in, uh, in Ill illegal fashions uh, to the news media. So I, I think that um, they can move the numbers around and take out the fact that they're not going to look at your bank account if you make $600. I'm not sure that's totally out. Maybe they'd move the figure up to 1000 or some other way. Uh, the invasion of privacy into individuals and small businesses is something that we hear about every day and I think would devastate uh, our economies. And think of the cost that this is going to be to small businesses, not only just being audited, but the time and energy and money it takes to answer. And, what, and you know, let's say when you saw the average amount of, uh, of uh, reef or, um, uh, recouped tax in some of the smaller businesses in the summer and some of the lower incomes, it's $20, $25. It's going to cost them thousands of dollars to be able to answer this. Um, I was also the uh, funder for the um, uh, IRS when I was uh, uh, on uh, chair of that subcommittee in, uh, in appropriations. This is what the IRS needs. Their computer system was created in 1962. They're writing off of old code, so they do need improvements, but they do not need $80 billion worth of agents knocking on everybody's door. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Bozeman. <clears throat> Thank you. Let me let me tell you how this is going to work. We're going to be in a situation where once your your checking account reaches a threshold of ten thousand dollars worth of activity, then all of your information is going to start going to the IRS. 
To put that in perspective, the average family's checking account activity is about $61,000. So that's virtually everybody. So it's going to go to the IRS. They're going to hire 87,000 new agents. Part of those agents are going to be looking at that information, uh, again, at a cost of $80 billion. At that point, if they see something that they don't like, they're going to start sending you a threatening letter. This is happening now if you run afoul of the IRS. The problem is you get on the phone, you try and call them, they'll answer about 40% of the time. If you are fortunate enough where they answer the phone, it's not uncommon at all to be put on hold for an extended period of time. They actually have a thing after about 45 minutes. They have what they call a courtesy disconnect where they hang up on you because they're trying to preserve your time. I was visiting with the accountants uh, a couple weeks ago. One of them, literally important case, trying to get through. They, the, the IRS won't see you in person. All of this is done by phone. Important case, was on the phone for four hours. They tried to hang up on her, and she literally broke into tears. So these are very real things. The last thing that we need to be doing is giving the IRS 87,000 new agents, $80 billion dollars, uh, there's lots of things that we could be doing for the IRS to help them with their customer service to make them more effective. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, stuff going on now that, that with the current resources that they have, that they could be much more effective in collecting. But again, this is certainly not the route to go. It wasn't too long ago that uh, uh, the IRS was, was uh, targeting conservatives. Uh, now we're seeing a situation through this build back uh, broke bill, or whatever we call it, uh, that they're going to be targeting the vast majority of the American population. Thank you. Senator Ernst. President Biden and our Washington Democrats here continue to falsely claim that the reckless tax and spending bill is going to cost zero dollars. But as you see from the chart and what we heard from in last week's uh, CBO score announcement, they were proved wrong. Uh, the bill will increase our nation's debt by three trillion dollars over a decade. So it's very clear to all of us that this massive package is full of all kinds of budget tricks, the budget gimmicks that will not come close to footing the bill for the radical tax and spending for the federal government. And one of these proposals includes their plan to literally weaponize the IRS. Again, 87,000 new IRS agents who will be snooping around in our bank accounts. And let's be clear who's going to be impacted. Everyday Iowans, our Iowa families, our small business owners, they are already struggling to make ends meet under this Biden economy. And this is yet another harmful way that the Democrats are punishing hardworking Americans at the expense of their far left priorities. Senator Holden. So the Democrats have a big tax and spend bill, and they want $80 billion to have a big IRS to go out and collect the big taxes in their big tax and spend bill. That's exactly what's going on here. And I think if you listen to Senator Bozeman, you heard very clearly what that means for everyday Americans. And even with their $80 billion increase for the IRS and their big taxes, they still don't even begin to pay for their big spending. Think about it. They've got a bill that's got 10 years worth of taxes, but only a few years worth of their programs, right? And so they're saying on that basis, it's about a $400 billion deficit. But we all know that those spending pro programs aren't going to stop after a few years. Don't take my word for it. Ask the Democrats that put forward the bill. Ask them, are they going to stop those spending programs in just a couple years? Of course not. And so if you have 10 years worth of spending, which they fully intend to do, against their 10 years worth of taxes, the cost of the bill is almost $5 trillion, $5 trillion, and it increases the debt by more than $3 trillion. And oh, that's CBO's number. That's CBO's number. And how about the timing? How about the timing? We just got the report that the consumer price index went up 6.8%, right? 
But today we find out that the PPI, the producer price index, which tells us what's coming, that went up almost 10 percent, 9.6 percent from November of last year to November of this year. More inflation. And what's inflation? That's a tax on everybody, and it's particularly a tax on low-income individuals. Again, people need to get a hold of their senators. They need to get a hold of their congressmen and women and tell them, stop this big tax and spend bill. Finally, Senator Cornyn. Why would you trust someone who says that a $3 trillion spending bill costs zero? Why would you trust them? And why would you trust this army that the Democrats are calling for in their weaponized or supersized uh, IRS? We already know the abuses that have occurred in the past where conservatives in particular were targeted uh, by the IRS. And then we see that uh, confidential information by law is leaked routinely uh, to the press. Now, this isn't so much the press's fault for printing it, but it is the fault of people who are breaking the law by re releasing confidential or private information uh, to the public. Uh, it's not supposed to be that way. It's simply the case that uh, the Democrats and their building back better or building back broke or building back bankrupt or building back bad, whatever you want to call it, are making extravagant promises that really are incredible. In other words, you, you can't believe it. And so just for the same reason that uh, people don't have confidence that this bill, this $3 trillion spending bill actually costs zero, I don't think they can have confidence that this new army of IRS agents that the Biden administration wants to hire will stay within its appropriate lane and collect taxes that are owed but not target uh, people who are uh, maybe not of their political philosophy or orientation or use the uh, IRS to further harass and abuse uh, the American taxpayer. All right, thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. Speaking of the IRS uh, and the $80 billion in the force and stuff, uh, have you heard back from the IRS about your letter on December 1st <laughs> asking about the issues of the post and your concerns there? No. I mean, well, we have been in communication with them. We've asked them multiple times. Uh, where they are in the investigation, and as of now, they have not provided any substantive response. Yes. Yeah. Two questions. Again, the first is um, the IRS is just with normal inflation, and the IRS budget is some twenty percent lower than it was just in twenty ten. Do you think that that is appropriate? I know you have problems with where this money is. I don't I don't have a number that I could put on that but I do believe that the IRS needs to upgrade its technology and its technological capacity to answer the telephone and I, I heard from, I think, one of you said that they, one of my colleagues said that they only answer 40% of their calls. I didn't know they were answering that many calls. My constituents don't think they are answering any calls. And, and, and frankly, so to give the IRS the resources necessary to bring its technological capacities into this century, uh, I believe would be helpful. But that's a very, very, very much smaller number than what they're asking for here. There's no denial that the IRS is seeking to do this, that the president is seeking to do this in order to, mag to magnify the amount of uh, audits so that they can go after the so-called tax gap. And I just want to re reiterate there, uh, what these, we didn't put the details on here, but when what these charts are based on is an analysis by the Joint Tax Committee of where the tax gap is. It's primarily in Schedule C and Schedule E, underreported income in Schedule C and E. And that is about 90% in incomes under $200,000. And there's no way they're going to get the money that they are referencing here. And the other question is you're pointing to the CBO, but I just have been reporting today, CBO came out with a score for the NDAA, which is moving out in the Senate. Um, same thing, 
And then that bill would add, if you look at it broadly, would add five trillion, five billion dollars or so. Five billion. Five trillion. I'd have to go see that score. <laughs> there's, there's, I guess the question is, when you're adding to the deficit for defense, which is something that is supported, why is that worthy versus Democrats argue that this is money for child care, for families, for things that, that Americans need? Why is defense worth weighing and other things? Well, I'm, I, I can't say I haven't seen that report. I'm going to be very surprised if that's in the trillions. Uh, and and it is true that our defense has been underfunded, in my opinion, for a significant amount of time, and I believe we are trying to just keep them up with inflation. But defense is one of the most, if not the most, important parts of our responsibility under the Constitution. And uh, I think that is a reason why we need to engage in that kind of uh, updating of the budgets. Yes, sir, here, and then you had a question here. Describing this kind of law enforcement is different from other kind of federal law enforcement. Why is why is it a problem for the IRS to go enforce the tax laws? Well, for one thing, there's not a problem with having the tax laws enforced in a fair and even-handed manner. But the IRS has already shown that, and people across this country get it instantly when you talk to them. The IRS has shown that it uses very, very heavy-handed tactics and has the ability to dig in, it has the ability under current law to dig into the every detail of individuals lives if they decide to audit them and because of the extent of that power and the record of abuse of that power the, you know the most recent abuses were focusing on conservative organizations but people understand that this is a phenomenal power that is abused and that's why there is such concern about it yeah. I don't think you could see that. I, look, I'm not going to analyze what has or hasn't happened in the FBI. I do believe that there have been uh, exam there can be examples of abuse in any law enforcement activity. But I believe that the IRS stands at a, in a very unique position uh, with regard to the concern that people have about its ability to get into their records. And, and let me just say, the IRS, I'll say this again, the IRS already has the ability to go into your bank account and make you show them every single penny of your activity if they conduct an audit. What this effort is undertaking is the effort to double or triple the size of the audit army. And fortunately, at least at this point, we have not been able, we have been able to keep out the uh, ability to have them report, get data on your bank accounts even before they start an audit. But as I mentioned in, in my first remarks, they've got $105 million in their proposal to create an army of re regulation writers so they can write the regulations to allow them to get into this information anyway. This is a huge threat. Yes? Should the IRS go after the tax cap? You said it was for people under 200,000. Do you see that as a problem or because it's relatively, you know, not the people only? I believe we should have uh, full tax compliance. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, one of the things that the IRS has indicated to us is that if they can get their technology into the, this century and, and get to the point where they can answer their phones and can work with law-abiding citizens, that they can help people more accurately prepare and file their taxes and that this underreporting in Schedule C and E is expected to go down. I believe that that kind of effort to help taxpayers, not to, not to punitively, aggressively attack taxpayers, would be very productive. And I think that it, we should do what we can to help taxpayers, honest taxpayers, find the way to pay their true taxes. For those who actually cheat on their taxes, yes, I believe they should be found. And I, I believe that they should be um, made to pay the taxes that they owe. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Um, Senator uh, Brady and I have introduced legislation to do exactly that, to put guardrails around what the IRS can and cannot do. For example, to prohibit, I'm not quite sure if we got all of these provisions in our bill, but I've put out proposals for these guardrails 
prohibit targeting people because of their political beliefs, to prohibit uh, random uh, abusive utilization of, of the authority to go into people's lives through audits. Um, and, and frankly, there's, there are things that we could do given the president's comments that he doesn't intend for this $80 billion to have any impact on anybody making less than $400,000, we could, and probably will, bring an amendment on the floor to do exactly that, to prohibit the utilization of these dollars to go after any taxpayer who earns less than $400,000. I mean, there's a lot of things that could be done to put protections in place. Yes. <laughs> there are conversations underway to try to get that accomplished. Can I say one thing? Yes. And then the, probably uh, just one more question after that. I don't think the argument is whether or not people should pay their taxes. Certainly they should do that at all levels. The question is how do you enforce that? People should could keep should keep all of our laws, but we don't have people coming into our homes, you know, searching around trying to find evidence that we've done something wrong. The, the idea of you hitting a threshold in your bank account that was originally $600, which would include everybody, now it's up to 10,000, average family 61,000. The idea of your financial tra transactions at that point going to the IRS is wrong. You know, that's, that's your business, unless they have evidence that you've done something wrong. The other problem is once you centralize that information, the IRS, the rest of our agencies are notorious for actually making it such that that information is not breachable. So instead of it being disseminated all over the country at various banks, all of a sudden it goes to one centralized location. And that's a recipe for the Chinese, the Russians, whoever, uh, for some industrious hacker to get that information. So there's all kinds of things that are wrong about this. Your colleague, pointed out that since 2010, there's been a reduction in funding of IRS. That's been done on a very bipartisan basis. Those were Democrat and Republican uh, administrations. And Congress agrees, this has not, not been a partisan issue. Both Democrats and Republicans have agreed they've done a lousy job, and that's why they've chosen not to fund them. So the idea of hassling, and then two, not following up in a, in a, in a meaningful way uh, where the other part of the hassle is just enduring the crisis that comes with that as you're in the process of contacting them and working it out is simply not right. Thank you. In fact, uh, we'll go here for the last question and then we both have to get down to the floor for the debt limit vote. Would be for cars only built in the United States after 2027, and would be richer for cars built in the United States before that. And they're threatening to um, put tariffs on our exports as a result if that goes through. I wanted to know what your thoughts are on, on preferencing American built cars, and also your thoughts on what influence you or other Republicans can have in that regard, given that none of you are expected to vote for the well, to answer the last part of your question, unfortunately, we are not being listened to by the administration on that or virtually any of the other issues that we have with the bill. Uh, this is a cram down. And, uh, you know, that's what happens in reconciliation quite often. Uh, with regard to what our uh, policy should be for American made vehicles, I'm all in favor of supporting American made policies. That being said, we have trade agreements with key allies, and those trade agreements create legal and, I think, enforcing parameters around which how we can deal with our Made in America uh, issues. And this goes far beyond vehicles. We need to stay within those legal binding agreements that we have. And you are right. I've been contacted personally. I think every member of Congress has been contacted personally by the governments of Mexico and Canada who are alarmed at what we are doing in this legislation that will violate our relations with them on trade. And that's a very critical matter that we need to take into consideration. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>